In this lesson, we're going to be talking about constructing your customer captivation offer. And as I mentioned earlier, this is all about delivering value while marketing and then selling. And so as you heard me mention earlier, it's first and foremost about delivering value. Keep in mind that an individual is coming to your lead magnet offer page. They're entering their contact details for information and then they're coming to the customer captivation offer page. And so we need to deliver value by fulfilling on the hook and promise that we made on the lead magnet offer page. And I'm gonna show you how to do that later on in module four. I also mentioned that the right way to do two-step marketing is to offer a lead magnet, but that lead magnet also does the marketing and selling for you. Now, the process is that we market, we're doing marketing, and then after we do our, our marketing, then we go into selling. See, this is something that most marketers don't understand. They don't understand the difference between marketing and selling. And so let's, let's talk about that. Marketing is all about your prospect. Marketing is talking about the prospect, talking about their problems, their needs, their desires, their wants. Selling is all about your product. It's all about the features of your product, the benefits of your product, the offer. See, anytime you're talking about you, your company, your product, your offer, a reason to buy, the different features of your product, the different benefits of your product, that's selling. Marketing is when you're talking about the prospect and you're talking about the prospect's needs and desires and wants. You see, this is critical because as Peter Drucker said, the job of marketing is to make selling superfluous. The job of marketing is to make it so that you don't need to sell. You basically get to offer your product or service. You get to offer your solution and you've built enough desire, enough interest during the marketing, right? Marketing is everything that you say before you introduce your product or service. It's everything that you say, everything that you do, everything that you present to the prospect so that when it comes time to present your product or service or introduce them to your product or service, they're already sold on what it does and why they want it. That's the difference between marketing and selling. And the better your marketing is, the easier the selling process becomes. Again, marketing is everything that you say and everything that you do before you introduce the prospect to your product or service. And so when our marketing is good enough, the offer becomes very easy to present to the prospect. And so let's talk about the customer captivation presentation outline. Now you're gonna be presenting your customer captivation offer via a video sales letter, via a VSL. And the order of which you're gonna present that information, that, that you're gonna present the VSL is as follows. And I'm not gonna dive extremely deep into each one of these because we could literally put together a multi-hour course on VSL construction in and of itself. And there, there are a lot of great courses out there that teach how to construct a VSL, like John Benson's course, for example. But I wanna go through each of these elements because I want you to understand the purpose and what's going on here. Again, keep in mind that on the customer captivation offer page, uh, and we're gonna cover the elements of that page, there is a video sales letter. And that video sales letter delivers the value as well as does the marketing and then does the selling by introducing your product or service. And so the VSL begins with your hook and promise, right? It's the hook and promise, keeping, keeping it congruent from the lead magnet offer page, right? Keeping it congruent. And this is the thing that is of most interest to your um, to your prospects, right? This is the thing that, that got them to enter their email address to request the free information. And so we start off by presenting your hook and then restating your promise. Now, after you do that, you wanna very quickly present your credentials. In other words, why should they listen to you as it relates to this topic, as it relates to this hook and promise? 
after you present your credentials and those credentials could be um could be experience those could be uh, um true credentials they could be the fact that you were where the prospect is right now and now you're where they want to be um and, and so the point is just to credentialize why they should listen to you the next step is to give them a reason why and in this case it's why is this information important? In other words, why is it that they should pay extremely close attention to what it is that you have to say in the rest of this video? And this is where you really restate the problem. This, in this portion of the VSL, you are restating the main problem that your prospects are having, the urgent problem that your solution is going to solve for them. And you are stating the problem, and then really what we could say is you are agitating the problem. So you're, you're stating the problem, you're reminding them of the problem, you're showing them the connection of what they're about to hear in this video to the problem that they're having, and then you're agitating the problem. So going with the example that we've been using up to this point, the whole uh, 56 or 54 years old and older and behind in your retirement savings and so what we would what we would want to do over here is say that look if you are 54 years or older and you are behind in your retirement this is critical information because and then we agitate the problem we, in other words, we really show them what is going to happen to them in the future if they don't take action. What is it that most people, most prospects in their situation that don't take action that don't aren't that aren't watching this video for example what is the outcome going to be the negative outcome for them so that's this section reason why right it's the problem and then we agitate the problem now when you state a problem you need to offer proof and that's proof that this problem is legitimate you know it's one thing to present or agitate a problem for a prospect especially when it comes to the agitation phase where you're showing them the negative outcome of not taking action the negative outcome of their current situation right when you when you say that you cannot just automatically expect that process prospects are going to believe you that they're going to just accept what it is that you're saying as fact you need to present proof that this is the that this is the case right you need to demonstrate one or more proof elements. I'm going to tell you that just as a quick aside, that when it comes to marketing, proof is one of the most critical aspects of your message because without proof backing up what it is that you're saying, all it is that you are doing is conveying claims. All it is that you're doing is making claims. This is how you turn a claim into an accepted fact. This is how you get prospects to believe and accept what it is that you are saying as true. It comes from the proof. And you're going to see later on that we have another uh, uh, additional proof points that we utilize at a different strategic point in the VSL. So you need to offer um, offer proof over here, right? So we've got this reason why, the problem, proof point, and agitate. These are all kind of one in the same section right here, right? We're, we're telling them what the problem is that they, that they have, we're agitating the problem, and we're providing proof. Then what we're doing in the next section is we're introducing them to the mechanism. This is now we're introducing them to the fact, going back to our example, that there is a new advertising, excuse me, new investing vehicle that will now allow them to double their net worth in five years or whatever that example was that I gave you earlier, right? So we're now introducing them to this mechanism. You know, we're almost saying like, look, this is what you're dealing with right now. Um, here's the proof for it. This is what's going to happen to you if you don't take action today. Fortunately, there is, boom, a mechanism that benefits, that gives them benefits, right? And then we, we show them the benefits and we list out the benefits. We give them the benefits of this mechanism, right? And so here is where at this point in the VSL, we're now showing them this is connected to the promise, right? Like when we said earlier, like, right, there's this new vehicle that 
um, there's this new investing vehicle that will allow you to double your net worth in 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 five years and what you're going to find in the rest of this video is a simple system that you can use right now to get started with this new investing vehicle so that in the next 60 months you see your net worth double or more now why should you listen to me when it comes to this boom and then you go into the right the reason why the problem the the proof aggravate the uh, agitate or aggravate the problem introduce your mechanism and then you show the benefits of this mechanism. It's the benefits of this mechanism. In this case, the benefits, the, the, the mechanism, right, is the new investing vehicle going with this, going and continuing with our example, right? Then of course, like I said, you need to provide proof. You can't just expect them to accept these benefits as fact. Remember, without proof, your stating of benefits, your, your statement of benefits simply become advertising claims and that's it. So you need to have proof to back up what it is that you are saying. After you provide proof that this mechanism really delivers benefits, that's when you introduce your solution. This solution is your product or service. And it's your solution that packages and delivers to them a usable approach, a usable process, a usable system for benefiting from this unique mechanism. So you introduce your solution and then you give features, advantages, and benefits. And on, on, a, on an upcoming slide, I'm going to break down for you the difference between advantages and benefits. But basically, you're, you're giving them the features of your solution. You're giving them the advantages of each feature. You're giving them the benefits. Um, and then what we're doing is after that, you are revealing the price, right? And so here is where you, re you reveal the price and you review, you reveal, excuse me, the add to cart button. And we're going to talk about the page development later on, but for right now, I want you to understand you reveal the price and you reveal the, um, the add to cart button. And that's when you have your first call to action. Call to action is really nothing more than, you know, um, to grab XYZ, um, product, go ahead and click the, you know, the orange add to cart button, um, below. After that first call to action, that's when you want to introduce your premium or bonus, your premiums or your bonus, your high value add on bonuses, right? And so you say, um, in addition to getting XYZ product, when you, when you order today, you're also going to get, and then you present the bonuses, of course, the features of the bonus, as well as the benefits. Then you give your risk reversal statement. This is where you present your money back guarantee, right? And in addition, as well, when you order today, you order completely risk-free because you get my XYZ guarantee. And we're gonna cover guarantee language and whatnot um, later on. Then you give a second call to action. So go to grab your, you know, to grab XYZ product, the free bonuses, all backed by the money back guarantee, go ahead and click the um, add to cart button below. The next um, point that you cover is an urgency reminder. This is if there's a price increase, if there are, if there's a limited quantity, you want to remind them of that. Now I'll tell you that in most cases, the better urgency reminder is to remind them of their problem and to remind them of what's going to happen um, if they don't take action. And that's why what we do is the next point is we future pay. So you remind them of their problem. You remind them of what's going to happen, like the likelihood, like, look, the reality is that people who don't take action are not going to be able to retire or they're not going to have enough money or they're going to have to live a, you know, an impoverished lifestyle or whatever it is. And so you remind them of that. But then you future pace. Then you say that, but you know, when you take action today and get X, Y, Z, now you show them, you bring them into the future and you show them what their life can be like or will be like with the with your solution and so you remind them of the problem of not taking action and the outcome of that and then you future pace them with what their life can look like when they do take action and then you give your final call to action go ahead click the add to cart button 
um, below and grab your package. And so this is the outline of the customer captivation offer presentation. Now, the thing that I want you to understand, we talked about the difference between marketing and selling. Well, what I want you to see is that these these sections right here are all marketing, right? The the hook, the promise, um, the 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 reason why, the problem, the proof points about the problem, aggravating the problem, the this new mechanism that's out there that's available to them, the benefits of that mechanism to them, the proof that this is going to work for them. This is all marketing. This is all creating the desire for your mechanism, creating the desire to utilize your mechanism to escape from their problem. The rest is selling. And so the key is that we're not just jumping right to introducing your solution right introducing them to your product or service we're starting with with marketing and it is this whole this it's showing them the proof that the problem exists and 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 helping them understand what their future is going to be like if they don't take action and do something about this problem and introducing them to this mechanism and showing them the benefits and providing the proof for these benefits, this whole section right here is what provides the value and fulfills on the hook and the promise that was made on the lead magnet offer page, right? Because you are in essence educating them. In the Marketing Funnel Automation Partnership Coaching Program, I teach a whole system called Education-Based Marketing, EBM Content, how we're actually using content, the appearance of content, educational, valuable content, but it's that content that happens to further the sale. It's that content that leads prospects closer to wanting to buy your product or service. And that's what we're doing here on this page. In this whole this whole sequence, right? The hook and the promise is what gets their attention. The pre presentation of your credentials tells them why they should listen to you. The reason why tells them why they need to pay attention to this information. The providing of proof shows them, demonstrates to them that what you're saying is true. The aggravation of the problem teaches them what's going to happen if they don't take action, right? The introducing of the mechanism is teaching them about an opportunity that they have now to relieve that problem. Showing them the benefits is teaching them about what they can experience with this mechanism and then providing proof for them is teaching them that they should pay close attention to this that this is true and that this is good and then it's here where you're introducing them to your solution this is where we begin the sales process this is now basically you've taken this you've taken this mechanism and you've put it into a package that you're now going to offer them. And so when you offer this package to them, now they are thankful when you've done this, this portion of the VSL correctly. Now, I talked about feature advantage and benefit. And so let's talk about what these are. Now, a feature advantage benefit statement explains the feature, explains what the feature does, and how it benefits the prospect. The prospect, excuse me. So, right, it's the feature explains, the, 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 the FAB statement explains what the feature is, which is the feature is, you know, features are, are facts, characteristics, aspects of your product or service, right? So, you, you give and explain a, 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 an element of your product. Then you give an advantage. Advantages are, again, what the features do. And then you give the benefit of that advantage, right? And benefits answer why a prospect should value the advantage. In other words, it connects the facts about your product to a solution for the um, for your client, for your prospect. And so let me give you an example of, a, of an FAB statement, right? This is kind of the template, if you will. Because it has the feature, you will be able to do advantage. And what that means for you is benefit. So here's this template taken into an example. Our sleeping bags have a one inch layer of insulation on them. This helps to retain body heat on cold nights. Um, on cold nights, you'll be warm all night, which means that you'll get a great you'll get a great sleep and be well rested for a day of fun activities that you'll enjoy fully. And so what you can see here is that this first statement 
is the feature. Our sleeping bags have a one inch layer of insulation on them. What does the feature do? Well, this is the advantage. It helps to retain body heat on cold nights um, so that you'll be warm, right? That is the advantage. What is the benefit? Which means that you'll get a great night's sleep and will be well rested for a day of fun activities that you'll enjoy, right? And so that is an example of a, an FAB statement. Now, let me give you some questions to help flesh out features, advantages, and benefits. Uh, first is, why might the feature that you are talking about be advantageous to the prospect? What does it mean for the prospect? What does it offer to the prospect? Why might the prospect like it? These are four questions that you can ask yourself when you're looking at the different features of your product or service to help flesh out the FAB statements.